Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green Ronas, the indomitable brawl deck, featuring the 3 mana 5 5 legendary god with Death Touch and Indestructible. But Ronas cannot attack or block unless you control another creature with power 4 or greater. And for 2 and a green, another target creature gets plus 2 plus 0 and gains trample until end of turn. So that's one way to enable Ronas so we can attack with him. And our deck is quite aggressive, of course needs some large creatures to enable Ronas to attack and block. So let's take a look at those creatures, starting out at 1 mana with Ascendant Pack Leader, a 2-1 that can pick up plus 1 counters over time. We've got Sentinel and Lanor Elves for a bit of mana acceleration. Long Tusk Stalker, despite not having a big energy theme in a the deck, is still quite powerful as it can basically attack as a 2-1 and perpetually give another creature in our hand one additional power. Then Pelt Collector, one of the best 1-drops we can start out with, as it will pick up plenty of plus 1 counters and eventually gain Trample. Tenacious Pup, another new card from Alchemy, a 1-2 that will make our next creature bigger. And Wildwood Tracker, a 1-1 that can attack as a 2-2 if we control another non-human creature. Then moving on to 2 mana, we've got the Caryatids, which can often tap for 2 mana if we control a creature with power 4 or greater. Long Tusk Cub, another powerful energy creature that can pick up more plus one counters in exchange for energy. Nessian Horn Beetle can also passively pick up more plus one plus one counters. Outland Liberator can deal with artifacts and enchantments. Paradise Druid for ramp. Resilient Kenra can pump up a creature when it enters a battlefield. Also can be eternalized out of the graveyard and comes into play as a 4-4, giving a creature plus four plus four. Then we've got Scavenging Ooze as a bit of a graveyard hate that can start growing over time as creatures end up in the graveyard. Sculptor of Winter gives us a bit of ramp and most of our mana base consists of snowlands. We've got a Wildborn Preserver, a 2-2 with Flash and Reach that can also pick up plus one counters if we can sink a bunch of mana into it. Barkhide Troll, a 3-3 essentially for two mana that can also gain Hexproof if we remove one of those counters. Then Sir Ferran is a 2-2 that gives another creature plus X plus X until end of turn where X is Sir Ferran's power, so synergizes quite nicely with Aronus' ability, as we can pump up Sir Ferran and then give another creature plus 4 power. Then a Werewolf Pack Leader, another great 2-drop that can potentially provide card advantage. Then moving on to 3 mana, of course we don't want too many 3-drops, as we can often just cast Ronos on turn 3 instead, but we do still have a Yorvo, a 4-4 that can pick up more plus 1 plus 1 counters, which is a common theme in this deck. Steel Leaf Champion, a 5-4 that's difficult to block. We've got Old Growth Troll, a 4-4 Trampler that when it dies leaves behind an enchantment. We've got Augur of Autumn providing card advantage by letting us play lands of the top and eventually creatures as well, and we're very good at enabling Coven in this deck. Rishkar can place some plus one counters on our creatures and turn them into mana creatures as well. Reclamation Sage to deal with artifacts and enchantments, and Lovestruck Beast can first be adventured to make a 1-1 one -one token and then a 5-5, five -five, which is great at enabling Ronas as well. Then at 4 mana we want mostly hasty creatures, so we can play them and attack with Ronas right away even after a board wipe, which is why we have the Olvenwald Oddity, a great new card from Crimson Vow, with Trample and Haste and a nice mana sink ability as well. We've got Questing Beast of course, then we've got Tosky Bear of Secrets to provide a bit of card advantage. Spirit of the Elder Guard with our Snowlands can be a 4-powered creature when it enters a battlefield and will grow over time, can help us search up Faceless Haven as a nice Snowland as well. And then Gem Racer we can mutate and can also enable Ronas and deal with an artifact or enchantment. Then at 5 mana we've got God Eternal Ronas which doubles the power of our creatures when it enters a battlefield, and also a 5-5 with Death Touch that we can keep getting back. We've got Virtuous Gearhulk, a 4-4 Trampler that will distribute 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters among creatures we control. And last but not least, Galta Primal Hunger, which we can often cast for very cheap. And then a 12-12 Trampler, also a card you could play as your commander in this style of deck. Then taking a look at our non-creature spells, at 1 mana you'll see plenty of fight spells and ways to protect our creatures, as well as Abundant Harvest, which can help us smooth out our draw by finding extra lands or non-lands. Blizzard Brawl as one of our fight spells to take advantage of our snow mana base. Blossoming Defense giving plus 2 plus 2 and hexproof, as well as Snakeskin Veil putting a plus 1 counter on our creature and giving it hexproof. Then Prey Upon and Savage Swipe are additional 1 mana fight spells. And Primal Might we can cast for x equals 0, and then can also be used as a pump spell and fight spell all in one. 
Then at 2 mana we've got more instant speed fight spells, with Inscription of Abundance with additional upside thanks to Kicker, Nature's Way at Sorcery Speed also gives Vigilance and Trample, and of course all these fight spells play very well with Ronas, which is indestructible and has Death Touch, so we can pretty much take out any opposing creature. Then we've got Once Upon a Time, another nice card to smooth out our draw. Then Ram Through gives us more instant speed removal, Ravenous Pursuit from Alchemy can perpetually grow one of our creatures if we can deal access damage in the fight, which Ronas is very good at. Sky Shroud Ambush can let us draw a card if we win a fight. We've got the Sylvan Anthem, an Anthem effect giving our creatures plus one plus one, and whenever a green creature enters the battlefield under our control we also get to scry one. And then Arcane Signet gives us a bit of a ramp, a staple in pretty much any brawl deck. Then at 3 mana we've got Heraldic Banner giving us more mana acceleration, as well as giving our green creatures one extra power, which is quite good in this deck. Garruk's Uprising lets us draw cards, gives our creatures Trample, and then Cultivate more mana acceleration, and basically a 2 for 1. Then at 4 mana Blessing of Frost can distribute more plus 1 plus 1 counters among creatures we control, and draw cards if we control lots of creatures with power 4 or greater. Garruk Unleashed can pump up our creatures or generate beast tokens. Vivian Arbo Ranger can distribute more plus one counters and can let us fight opposing creatures as well. And then at five mana, a couple more Planeswalkers with Vivian Reed, which can take out artifacts or enchantments and find more creatures with the plus one. And then Vivian Monsters Advocate lets us play creatures of the top with a passive and generate 3-3 three, three beast tokens with various abilities every turn. And then Unnatural Growth is very similar to Ronas at 5 mana, doubling all the power and toughness of creatures we control, but this one of course can keep happening turn after turn. And then as a Great Henge, similar to Galta, gets a discount equal to the greatest power among creatures we control, as opposed to the total sum, so Galta's a little bit easier to play still than the Great Henge, but with a 5 powered creature, Great Henge can come down for just 4 mana on turn 4, and then provide a steady stream of card advantage. Then our mana base, as we discussed, has 36 snow-covered forests, as well as one faceless haven with a new alchemy update, turning into a 3-3 creature with vigilance until end of turn with 3 snow mana. And then we've got Castle Garenbrig, potentially giving extra mana for casting creature spells, as well as Hash of Oasis, which can pump up one of our creatures, and then Lair of the Hydra as another creature land. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against Emery, so having access to Scavenging Ooze for Graveyard Hate seems important. And then Paradise Roots and Banner for a bit of extra mana. Can never hurt. Alright, turn one Wand for more self mill. And there is a turn to Emery. So I can probably wait on Scavenging Ooze until we have more mana to sink into the ability. So for now, play Paradise Druids. Alright, Mirror can give the opponent two mana next turn. And uh, Thought Monitor, we definitely want to exile here as soon as possible. So... Yeah, I guess Scavenging Ooze, Exile, Thought Monitor. And then we'll still have one mana remaining, in case they mill over more goodies with the Wand of Vertebrae. Can also Exile the Chromatic Sphere in response to them activating Emery. So in response, we'll use the ooze. And now Tesseract can provide card advantage or make Thopters. Ooh, Vivian was an excellent draw, so now we can pressure Tesseract. So I can pump both of my creatures, which will also gain Trample, will take back what rightfully belongs to it. and send both at Tezzeret. My, my, how you've grown!
And our opponent can use the spring jaw trap, but it only deals three damage, so not enough to take out scavenging ooze. And they don't have enough power to take out Vivian here, so that was a good turn. War of Invention can search up an artifact with mana value 5. And Paradox Engine certainly quite powerful. You're lower than worms. But an Outland Liberator is an answer to Paradox Engine, so the hits keep on coming. So essentially have 6 mana if we tap Paradise Druids. It's 3 to play and sacrifice Liberator. Although I guess we also want to exile the Paradox Engine so they cannot get it back. But yeah, the Liberator, enough to prompt a concession. Could have maybe tried to switch it to Nighttime so we can keep destroying artifacts, but that's probably a bit greedy here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Heliot, a life gain deck. And uh, yeah, our hand's okay. Could use a better 2-drop, but don't think I'm mulliganing. Can maybe use ram through if they've got a one drop here. And then we can mutate gem razor as well. Alright, Vanguard gives us a target for ram through. Seems worth it. And then next turn could already mutate Gem Razor. Or we could play Ronas and just cast a Gem Razor, or maybe Garrick. Yeah, I guess Ronas is fine. Opponent goes for the trade. So there's quite a few artifacts and enchantments that are worth destroying with Gem Razor if we mutate. The problem is if I don't cast a Gem Razor, then I wouldn't be able to attack with Ronos necessarily. I guess I could mutate Gem Razor onto Ronos, but then I don't think that lets us attack. So interesting spots. Might just let them have these artifacts and enchantments for a turn, give up on a Ronas attack and just go for Garruk here. Although we also have the Liberator as another answer, so... Really quite a few options. Next turn, the Anthem pumping the Beast also enables Ronas. So we can maybe have an efficient turn between Anthem and Liberator. Armor fertilizes crops. I like animals better than people. Elspeth conquers death. Gonna get rid of Garrick, that's okay. And then... Probably don't care about the second chapter too much. Can go for Anthem plus Longtusk Cub. I'll keep the line on top, lets me double spell next turn. Disenchants my anthem. But we've got more ways to enable Ronos here. So mutate Gem Razor onto the cub, I think. And destroy either Conqueror's Death or Cleric Class. I guess Conqueror's Death makes more sense. Attack. And then probably fine to play out Liberator. Can now pump the Long Tusk Cub as well. Given that we have an odd amount of energy, I don't think the one extra energy is going to come into play with the Long Tusk Cub. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. All 
All right, we're on the draw facing Sithis, which is one of the most powerful Brawl Commanders out there. Our hand does have a little bit of removal, which is important, so I'll give this a try. Turn one Lunar Elves, a very exciting draw. So next turn I could play Troll and Prey Upon to take out their commander. That seems fine. And we can keep the ball rolling next turn with maybe a Spirit of the Elder Guard. Rishkar also has a bit of synergy with the Barkai Troll, which already has a plus one plus one counter, so it can tap for mana right away. Authority makes our creatures come into play tapped. So... Rishkar's not a bad play, but I'm kind of preferring either Ronas or Spirit. If I play Ronas next turn, I can play another Ronas, and that's going to be a ton of damage, so sure, let's try that. And then probably fine to attack with Elves as opposed to keeping up the Barkai Troll's ability. Opponent passes with three mana. Not sure what type of instance our opponent is playing. So how much damage would Ronas deal? Opponent goes back up to 23, double the Troll and Ronas, so that's 16, not quite lethal. So maybe it's fine to play a Spirit of the Elder Guard first. And then I guess Ronas is still unable to attack since we have a non-snow land in play. Which is a little awkward, so maybe it's still fine to play God Eternal here. Sixteen damage, pretty far ahead on board. And if they even have a sweeper, I can still follow up with a spirit to let Ronas attack. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. All right, we're on the play, facing a Yogmoth Physician deck. So can expect quite a bit of removal for our green creatures. This hand's not particularly exciting, but probably still keepable. Hopefully find a target for Reclamation Sage. And Horn Beetle can start growing as soon as we play Ronas. So we'll start out with our Insect here. Black could have some ways of exiling Ronas. So that gets around the indestructible. Vizier making a Death Touch zombie army token here can block the Horn Beetle profitably. So. Can still attack with Ronas at least. And then I'm probably gonna just double spell with my two drops. Opponent takes five. And Phyrexian Scriptures threatens to wipe my board, but Reclamation Sage can deal with the enchantment. So I'm fine committing an extra creature to the board. Okay, so I could use Castle Garenbrig to play both Augur and Reclamation Sage. Even though I give up a bit of Augur value. So as much as I want to play the pup, I think we have to deal with the scriptures. Now interestingly, Virgis Gearhulk is an artifact, so that would have survived the scriptures, but... And now, probably fine to attack with all. They can trade for Horn Beetle. Maybe for the Preserver too. Still take eight. And if we can dodge a Sweeper, we're in great shape. Solemn, that's fine. So Gearhulk might give us enough for lethal here. 
play a land first. Can use cancel. And then... Not quite enough mana to play Gear Hulk and to Rishkar, unless I Rishkar first and then tap a creature for mana. But that kind of defeats the purpose of adding more counters to my creatures, so... Probably just go for Gear Hulk. And this should be enough to each. And then I guess we'll play this too. So they can jump and still take lethal here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Shovel, a black-green Death Touch deck. So we can expect a lot of removal. It's going to be the fight of the Death Touch commanders. But we've got an excellent plan against Shovel, which is just playing our indestructible commander, playing a Great Henge, and getting a ton of card advantage. And then Primal Mites can also potentially deal with their commander at some point. So for now, just gonna pass. Can flash and preserver end of turn if I want to. Although I might want to wait to play Ronas first. Also would have been reasonable to just not play anything until I get the Great Henge going. So do I want to play Preserver, or do I just wait to play Ronas first? I think we wait. This could be painful if our opponent has a Sacrifice effect to get my commander here. Scavenger's fine. Okay, so I can play the Great Henge and then still Primal Might if I want to. Or I can wait, just flash in a creature end of turn. And the fact that our opponent cannot put any extra counters with Shovel and it's stuck on my indestructible creature is also quite nice. Although Binding is painful since that can deal with the Great Henge. So I'll probably flash in Preserver to get some value first. So Binding dealing with Great Henge is a pretty big setback, but we can still try and battle through this. Do I want to trade? Probably. Snakeskin Veil is a good one to keep up. Although... I do want to keep up Snakeskin Veil, so I don't necessarily want to tap out for Gearhawk. So that leaves the option of playing Kenra, pumping itself so Ronos can attack. And then I can also Primal Mites just to kill Shovel here. Opponent's ramping. But yeah, that uh, bounty counter is still stuck on Ronas. Might as well fizzle the Murder Strider so they also won't be able to play the creature half. And then now we'll tap out for Gearhawk, distribute some counters, and our opponent has seen enough. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Facing Narset of the Ancient Way, so more controlling strategy. Fine to lead with pack leader, can apply a bit more pressure than the human token. And then we're looking at maybe a turn 3 Ronos, turn 4 Vivian. Playing beasts could uh, have its drawbacks if our opponent can deal with the tokens, I think playing Ronos is the safer bet. And then Vivian can hopefully pump up the pack leader enough for Ronos to attack. I'm 
So counter on pack leader and one on Ronas, so we keep the one one for Lovestruck Beast. And smash, opponent already down to nine, so being on the play, having a good curve out draw has its benefits. Even if our opponent has a board wipe, we still get to keep Ronos and our Planeswalker, and then Beasts enables Ronos once again. And yeah, our opponent realizes they're just too far behind and has to pack it in onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Sika God of the Tree, which is interested in casting the Prismatic Bridge, one of the most powerful commanders. And if we don't have some sort of answer to artifacts or enchantments, we're not going to win. So this is a mulligan. Alright, Gem Razor is nice, so we'll try it. Still need a cheap creature to mutate onto, ideally. For now, our Cane Signet will have to do. And then I guess I could mutate onto Toski, which is not a bad target. So next turn we can see the bridge. For now, we get to add Ronas and Tracker to the board, but we'll attack first to see what else we might draw. Could also blow up the Chromatic Lantern, but I'm more interested in destroying the Prismatic Bridge. And then, yeah, mutating onto Toski is not bad. Could also mutate onto the Wildwood Tracker to diversify, although Toski does have the advantage of being indestructible. Opponent going for an Hour of Promise instead, so I'm not playing the bridge right away. I guess Steel Leaf Champion will have to do to enable Ronas. And then I could also pump with Ronas or see what we draw first. Augur of Autumn, Sir Farron could expect a sweeper next turn, although we do have two indestructible creatures, so it's going to have to be a very specific sweeper to be backbreaking. So I think I save Augur and just play Sir Farron. And then, yeah, hopefully they finally commit the Prismatic Bridge. It's going to be a Chandra Awakened Inferno instead. Can deal three to everything, that's not quite as impactful as they would like it to be. And still gonna wait on Gem Razor, I think. Unless I can kill my opponent here, which I guess by just activating Ronos twice we can get there, so we beat a Sika, even though our opponent never played Prismatic Bridge, we were prepared to answer it. Alright, so we get to see our Ronos Brawl deck in action. Lots of fast-paced games that are over pretty quickly, so ideal for completing your daily quests. Although keep in mind that if you queue up with Ronos, you'll probably get matched against a lot of the Tier 1 Brawl decks out there. Decks like niv Reborn, Esika, Sithis, and uh, Golos I've seen quite a bit when practicing as well. So you'll have to put up with those decks as well, which might get a little bit repetitive as opposed to playing some different deck. But uh, yeah, that's what you get for playing one of the powerful green decks in the format. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.